myself pradeep working as assistant professor in the civil engineering department of mit engineering college uh, in the semester i am going to handle the subject groundwater and hydraulics and it is having the subject code 17 cv 742 let's start with the word groundwater and hydraulics it can be split into two words groundwater and hydraulics groundwater means the water which is available in the underneath part of the earth surface and the water which occurs in the cracks of the rocks and in the void spaces of the soil particles and we have the term hydraulics this hydraulic term can be split into two word again hydra plus olex as you all know hydra means water and olex means a pathway for the flow of water since we are dealing with the ground water we are going to study about the movement of the ground water how the ground water occurs or how the ground water exists in what way the ground water can be extracted and in what way the ground water can be recharged so these are all the co concepts which are present in the syllabus later on in the different modules we are going to study about all these con concepts let's start with the first module the first module deals with the introduction about the ground water let's start with the importance of the ground water as we all know the availability of the ground water is much lesser than the surface water even though the availability of surface water is greater than the ground water uh, owing to the decentralized availability of the ground water the ground water plays a major role in the uh, <coughs> agricultural activities or in it plays a major role in the industrial activities as well as the ground water plays a very very important role in the uh, for the drink, drinking water purpose in the village since the ground water is readily available wherever necessary we can dig a borewell and just extract the ground water and we can supply the needs the one fifth of the world's water usage is from the ground water and the in our country 68% of the ground water is completely replenished by the rainfall the india is fast moving towards the water crisis since the onset of the green revolution we are extensively using the uh, manures for the farming as well as there is an over usage of water for the crops uh, the since india is uh, overly depending upon the ground water in the times of drought that is when the surface water is not available the ground water is extracted more and more and it is it has been used to serve the purpose the only option available for us is to recharge the ground water since we are not thinking much about the recharge and we are just going for the extraction of the ground water one day the ground water as it will be getting uh, uh, getting away from the earth uh, i mean the entire world itself one of the uh, example in the recent time i can give us the uh, cape town town uh, which is present in the south africa in the year 2018 and 2019 there was not even a single drop of water available in the entire cape town uh, aliginta um, the local example which i can quote is the kola region before 25 years the water was readily available at the depth of about 100 meet 100 feet 125 feet or maximum 150 feet but now even though we dig the borewell up to the depth of 1200 1500 feet the water is available only of an inch 1.1 inch or 1.5 inch or 0.5 inch since the farmers have extensively de uh, depending upon the ground water they don't have any other option other than the recharging of the ground water so this uh, uh, is the importance of the ground water the uh, methods of recharging the ground water will be uh, studied in depth in the later uh, modules the next topic is the vertical distribution of the ground water 
let me write a schematic representation of the vertical distribution of the groundwater. Groundwater exists in two zones, zone 1 and zone 2. Zone 1 is called of, called as zone of aeration and zone 2 is called as zone of saturation. I will give you the reason why it is called as zone of aeration and why it is called as zone of saturation. This zone of aeration or zone 1 is made up of the rocks and tiny soil particles. There will be a space available in between these soil particles as well as between these rocks and the space is called as voids. These voids are filled with water, a little bit of water and more amount of air. That is why this zone is called as <coughs> zone of aeration. Okay? And similarly, zone 2 also consists of rocks and a tiny soil particles, there will also be voids and those voids are filled only with water. That is why it is called as zone of saturation. We can say the degree of saturation for the zone 1 is less than 1 because it is filled, the void spaces are filled with water, little bit of water and more amount of air. Therefore, the degree of saturation for the zone 1 will be less than 1 and for the zone 2, the degree of saturation will be equal to 1. So, if they ask to define zone of aeration, you can say it is the part of vertical distribution of the groundwater and it exists beneath the surface of the earth and above the water table. If they ask the definition of zone of saturation, you can say it is the part of vertical distribution of the groundwater and it exists above an impermeable surface and below the water table. Okay.
here the zone of aeration is again classified into three zones. Let me write it. Zone of aeration is again classified into three zones, soil water zone, intermediate water zone and capillary zones. Let us see the application of three, these three zones. When the rainfall happens, the water starts to infiltrate to the bottom part of this ground surface and it moves towards the soil water zone. The soil water zone acts as a passage and it allows the water that is rain water to pass through it and it makes the water to reach the water table that is the application of soil water zone. The water which is present in the water table starts to rise above it because of the capillarity or the capillarity principle and that process takes place in the capillary zone that is the application of the capillary zone and there will be a zone which acts as a passage or the space between the soil water zone and the capillary zone and that space is called as intermediate water zone. Okay. Hello everyone the next topic is occurrence of the ground water in the different geological formation. To understand that I have written this schematic representation of cross section of the earth crust. The ground water occurs in the different locations or in the different geological formation. So what all the di different geological formation we come across is the first one is aquifer, the second one is aquiclude, the third one is aquitard and the fourth one is aquifuge. Let us study about the aquifer first. Aquifer is a geological formation which has got the water stored in it and it readily yields the water whenever it is necessary. There are two important concepts which you should remember here. Aquifer stores water as well as it releases the water. If it is storing water it should have good por porosity and if it is yielding the water it should have got the property of permeability. So, if it has got the permeability, it yields the water out of it. If it has got the porosity, it accepts the water and it stores the water. So, there are two kinds of aquifer which we come across in the field. The first one is confined aquifer and the second one is unconfined aquifer. You can see in this diagram, at the bottom part of the diagram, I have written it as confined aquifer and at the upper part I have written it as unconfined aquifer. Okay. For the confined aquifer, the bot bottom portion you can see the hatch portion here, it is written as impermeable membrane and this upper part is also an impermeable membrane. Okay. So there will be a lot of water stored between these two impermeable membranes or you can say an confined aquifer is a structure which is sandwiched between two impermeable membranes. Then <coughs> what do you mean by an impermeable, impermeable membrane? An impermeable membrane means it does not allow any sort of water to seep through it or to pass through it. Okay? I hope you understood. A confined aquifer is a structure which is sandwiched between two impermeable membranes. Two impermeable membranes means or an impermeable membrane means it does not allow any sort of water to seep through it or through pass through it. Okay? Just observe here I have written it as unconfined aquifer. For the unconfined aquifer 
the bottom portion will be this impermeable membrane and the top part will be this free water surface okay i have just named it as water table okay so how can you define an unconfined aquifer an unconfined aquifer is a geological formation or a structure which has got a free water table and at the bottom it has got impermeable membrane okay in the exam they may ask what is the difference between a confined aquifer and unconfined aquifer so the basic difference is for an unconfined aquifer there will be free water table for the confined aquifer there won't be any free water table okay and you can just write the definition for the difference for the confined aquifer it will be sandwiched between two impermeable membrane for the unconfined aquifer the bottom portion will be impermeable membrane and the top portion will be an water table okay so that's about the classification of aquifer that is confined aquifer and unconfined aquifer for the unconfined aquifer we can give an example it is made up of a lime stone okay and you just observe the diagram i have written a dotted lines throughout the diagram above this water table and i have named it as piezometric surface so what do you mean by a piezometric surface if just imagine there is no structure here the water body is present okay if there is free water body here without all these structures the water body forms an imaginary line and that line is called as piezometric surface okay now you can see there are number of bore wells written in this diagram okay i will just dig a bore well to get the water or to extract the water and that bore well will reach this confined aquifer okay once i dig the bore well and if i start to extract the water from the confined aquifer the water starts to rise in this bore hole and if it reaches this imaginary surface that is piezometric surface then such type of bore well is called as an artesian well okay next there are two bore wells additional to this main bore well you can see in the diagram okay if i dig another bore well and if it reaches this confined aquifer if the water starts to rise and reaches the piezometric surface and one more important thing here and if that piezometric surface coincides with the earth surface then such type of the well is called as flowing well or free flowing well because the water comes out and it just flows on the surface of the earth that's why it is called as flowing well or you can just call it as free flowing well okay you can see one more bore well which is dug and it has reached to the confined aquifer alone it hasn't passed to the bottom part it has just reached up to the confined aquifer okay and here also the water once you start to extract the water it reaches to the ground surface and such types of the bore well is called as water table well okay so these three definitions will be asked separately what do you mean by an artesian well what do you mean by free flowing well what do you mean by water table well it will be asked separately for maybe one mark or two marks with the diagram okay the next thing is the next geological formation is the aquic fluid okay aquic fluid is defined as a geological formation which has got the water stored in it because it has got good porosity but it since it is very weak in permeability it can't yield the water okay so such type of aquifers are called as i mean such type of geological formations are called as aqui 
clue. Okay? I will define once again a geological formation which has got the water stored in it because of good porosity, but it can't yield any sort of water because of bad permeability. Okay? The next uh, an example for the aqueous fluid is the clay. The next geological formation is aquitard. Here also the aquitard can be defined as a geological formation which has got water stored in it. Since it is very good in porosity, it accepts the water and it stores the water. But since it is very, very bad in permeability, it does not yield any sort of water to the wells if you dig it. Okay? But one more, uh, one important point is this aquitard passes its water which is stored inside it to an another geological formation that is another geological formation means an aquifer. It passes the water which is stored inside it to an another geological formation that is aquifer. That is a special property which aquitard holds. An example for that is sandy clay. That is that geological formation is made up of the sandy clay. The next geological formation is aquifuge. Here, aquifuge does not have any sort of water stored in it. So, the question of um, yielding of water does not arise here. Okay? An example for that is solid granite. Uh, why aquifuge does not uh, yield water or why it does not hold any sort of water means? Uh, because it is very weak in porosity and it is very, very weak in permeability. So, it does not have any water to yield or it does not hold any sort of water. So, that is about different geological formations. Okay? Uh, again, there are uh, two cases which we come across in the field. Uh, leaky confined aquifer and leaky unconfined aquifer. Okay? All of you know what do you mean by confined aquifer. A confined aquifer is a geological formation which has got an upper and lower impermeable membrane. But in the field or practically speaking, these impermeable membranes will not be completely impermeable. There will be some sort of leakage or this membrane itself will be saturated. So, such type of <coughs> confined aquifer which has got the <coughs> membranes to be saturated or called as leaky confined aquifers. Okay? And there is leaky unconfined aquifer uh, which I have written here. Leaky confined unconfined aquifer it means an aquifer which has got a water table at the top and at the bottom there will be a saturated membrane which passes the water, a little bit of water to the down, down side of the confined aquifer. Okay? Such type of unconfined aquifer are called as leaky unconfined aquifers. So that is all about the first module. We are, here we have only few topics. The first topic is about the importance of the groundwater. The second topic is about the vertical distribution of the groundwater. And the to third topic is about the occurrence of the groundwater in the different geological formation. The one more additional question you can expect is uh, what do you mean by a leaky confined aquifer and leaky unconfined aquifer. That's all. Uh, we will continue with the second module in the next session. Hello everyone, today we shall start with module 2. In the module 2, the first topic is aquifer parameters. As we all have discussed in the previous classes about the aquifer, let me uh, just uh, refresh the topic of aquifer first. Uh, aquifer is a geological formation which readily yields the water as well as it stores the water. 
If it is storing the water means it should have good porosity and if it is yielding the water means it should have good permeability. Okay? So then next word which you should know is parameter. What do you mean by a parameter? So, the measurable factors is nothing but called as parameter. So, the first topic is aquifer parameter that means the measurable factors of the aquifers should be known first. The first measurable factor of an aquifer is porosity and the next measurable factor of the aquifer is specific yield. Okay. To make you to understand about porosity and specific yield, let me write a schematic diagram. Okay. This is the schematic diagram representing the rocks and the spaces between the rocks. These spaces between the rocks are called as voids and these voids will be filled by the ground water. Okay. Suppose in between these rocks, if there is soil particles, then these void spaces will be filled by the soil particles and in between those soil particles, there will be tiny spaces and those tiny spaces are also called as voids and those tiny spaces will be filled with two components, one is air and other one is groundwater. Let me take an example of completely filling up of groundwater. Okay. So, what I will be doing is I am going to take the volume of this formation or the volume of this geological formation. So, I am going to represent the volume of that geological formation with the help of a notation that is V. Let me write it here. Volume of the formation is measured and written and I am going to write it as or have written it as V. Okay. The notation for the volume of the formation is V here. Similarly, what I will be doing is I am going to measure these void spaces volume and I am going to represent it with a notation. Volume of the voids and I am going to represent it with a notation V suffix. V. Okay. What I am going to do here is I am going to take the ratio of this volume of void to the volume of this formation. Okay. Let me write it here. Okay. So, what does this represent? The ratio of volume of voids to the volume of formation represents 
the porosity of this formation. The first aquifer parameter is porosity and we are representing it with the symbol n okay and I defined here it is the ratio of volume of voids to the volume of the total formation okay. Let me give an example to understand what do you mean by porosity okay. So as definition porosity is equal to volume of voids to the volume of formation okay so here yeah. let me say the volume of this total formation is 30 meter cube and the volume of this voids is 3 meter cube okay look here what I will be getting porosity equals 1 by or you can just write it as 0.1 or you can write it as 10 percent correct ok look here. So n I got it as 10 percent equals vv by v ok let me write it here 10 percent equals vv by v or you can write it as vv equals 10 percent of the total volume of the formation ok. So you can clearly see here the porosity is nothing but or the space occupied by the voids is nothing but 10 percent of the total volume and that itself is called as porosity ok. So if anyone asks what is the volume of the voids occupied then you can say it is occupying 10 percent of total volume of the rock formation ok. So this porosity is nothing but a representation of the content of or the total content of the voids in the total formation clear ok. Next the next property is or the next measurable parameter is or the next measurable factor is specific yield and we are going to represent with the symbol S suffix Y ok. Previously what I did I measured the total volume of the formation and I wrote it as V and I measured total volume of this voids and I represent it as VV. Now what I am going to do is the total volume of the ground water which is passing through this voids will be calculated or it will be measured and I am going to just give it a notation volume of the ground water drained is represented as V D ok. Now what I am going to do is I am going to take the ratio of volume of of the water which is going to drain out in this void to the total volume of the rock formation and this ratio represents specific yield ok. Same thing we can give an example here also let me say the volume of the water drained out of these voids is 3 meter cube and total volume of this formation is 30 meter cube here also you will get it as 0.1 or 10 percent ok. So what I am going to do is 10 percent equals Vd by V or 
टेन परसेंट ऑफ टोटल वॉल्यूम ऑक्यूपाइड दिस रॉक इज इक्वल टू द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द वॉइड्स सॉरी द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द वॉटर विच ड्राइंस आउट फ्रॉम दिस वॉइड ओके सो इफ एनी वन आस्क वॉट इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द ग्राउंड वॉटर विच ड्राइंस आउट फ्रॉम दिस वॉइड्स देन यू कैन गिव एन एग्जाम्पल लाइक दिस एंड मेक दैम टू अंडरस्टैंड और इट इज वेरी इजी टू इमेजिन नाउ लुक यर द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द ग्राउंड वॉटर विच गेट्स ड्राइंड आउट फ्रॉम दिस वॉइड इज नथिंग बट equal to 10% of the total volume occupied this by this rock okay the basic thing you should remember is how we will calculate volume okay and give just an example here look here this is length this is breadth and this is depth let me take a cube here i'm going to fill up this cube with water okay so if anyone ask what is the volume of this cube how will you calculate you're going to just multiply all these dimensions and if you are measuring in terms of meter the volume occupied will be in terms of meter cube in the same way we are going to measure the volume of this entire rock formation volume of this uh, voids and we are going to just represent that in the form of values okay there are different ways of measuring all these volumes okay you are going to learn all those things in the uh, or you had already learned all those things in the geotechnology laboratories okay so this about specific yield and the porosity now a question arises on what all the factors on which the specific yield depends let me write on all, what all the on what all the factors on which the specific yield depends that first factor on which the specific yield depends is the grain size okay look here you can see in the diagram i have written the rocks in between the rocks I have written soil particles if this soil particle size is bigger there will be bigger voids available in between those soil particles okay if the soil particle size is very small then the space between those soil particles will be less okay if the size of the soil particle is more the specific yield will be more because the void spaces will be more more water can pass through these voids okay if the size of the soil particle is less the volume between sorry the voids between these soil particles will be very less or the size of the voids will be very less and the water which can pass through this voids will be very very less that's why the specific yield will be less for the lesser grain size okay the second factor on which the specific yield depends is the compactness okay if the soil particles are very well compacted or if it is naturally compacted then these the void spaces between these soil particles will be very less and the specific yield will be less as very less amount of the water can pass through the available space okay if the soil particles are not compacted the space between these soil particles will be more and ground water can easily pass through this bigger spaces that's why the specific yield will be more if the compactness of the soil is less okay and the third factor on which the specific yield depends is shape and size 
of the voids. Okay, look here. As you all know, the soil particles will be having angular shape, a rounded shape, or it may be flaky like this. Okay, if the soil particles is of rounded shape, then the space available between those soil particles will be more. The more amount of water can pass through those uh, soil particles voids and the specific yield will be more. For the angular and for the flaky shape soil particles, the space available will be less, the amount of groundwater passing through that space will be less and the specific yield of that soil structure will be less. Okay? So these are the three factors on which the specific yield depends. Okay? And I spoke about the grain size. Okay? If the soil is fine graded, we say that specific yield is more. Because if the soil particles will be having uniform shape, What happens? The space between those soil particles will be less and the water passing through that space will be less and the specific yield of that soil structure will be less. For the coarse grain soils, since the space available between the coarse grain soil is more, the water passing through that space will be more and the specific yield will be more. Okay? So this is about the specific yield. Another thing you should observe here is when I spoke about the porosity, you can see the spaces available between the rocks is more than we will say that porosity is greater and if the space available between the rocks is less because this space is filled with the soil particles then we can say that porosity is less for these kind of structures. Okay? So we discussed about porosity first and the next is specific yield. Okay? The next topic is about the permeability. To explain about the permeability, I am going to write the schematic diagram.